What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am uh, sorry I haven't made videos in a while. I've been kind of busy with life and just doing other things and unfortunately haven't been trading as much because I was just caught in a drawdown and trying to um, not waste a lot of my time uh, getting caught up. Like I've been studying the markets but I just haven't been trading and I don't want to be, you know, giving you guys updates on things that aren't even updates really just like learning myself and constantly learning every day and I decided I was probably gonna um, give you guys an update on crypto because I said in a video a long time ago that I was um, on a lot long, a couple months last time I made a video really that I thought crypto was gonna crash and obviously it didn't within like the week after I said that it basically bounced right up to highs and it it's still trading at highs um, right now basically um, and the whole thing about this, you know, before was my idea that like the spy was going to cr crash and that the markets were going to crash and that we were going to see the recession that we keep being told is coming uh, and just never comes. So the idea, you know, kind of went out the window as soon as we didn't get the recession that we were talking and uh, we kept hearing about, you know, like when you when you go to the overall markets and you start looking at the spy or the or the cues um you know you're gonna find out very quickly that pretty much all of them are trading up on the year or at least in the last you know few months they've been green and everything keeps going up so when we said you know there might be a recession coming and when we thought that it was a good time probably to get out i wasn't long term full time you know getting out forever it was hey there's a there's a crash coming and and um we we don't want to be stuck in something if we're not going to see the kind of value we want to see right um and you know when you look at the overall markets you know the spy went up to 474 right like it went up all the way up to 474 um and that was back in 2021 but you know the last year we've seen it just kind of collapse 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 and we thought we were going to get a a bigger pullback here right so we had this huge selling day and this is this is when i made that video right like when you go back and look or actually it might have been here but this is a bigger chart i don't know this is a this must be like a yearly chart or something or like a, a week i don't know I don't like these. I don't like the way they chart this. It's harder. I don't really. I just kind of. It was the first one I did. So let me try and pull up a better chart here, so I can actually show you guys. Um, Market Watch usually does better charting. Yeah. So this is a much better charting software. So, um, and maybe some people like Yahoo. I don't know. I just. I don't use it a lot. So it's like, I like to be able to pick, what I'm, actually looking at. Whether it's a daily chart, whether it's a monthly, and you can see that these are all based on, you know, three month daily chart. Um, so you want to do the one year, w one day kind of chart, right? Um, but you're going to have to do the three year, one day chart because it goes back so far because you have to see all the way back to 2021. And this is the thing. We've been on this downtrend for the last two years, basically, right? You had this run up after COVID and then you had this thought of crash, crash. And then it was around here when they started talking about recession, right? Like this is all the way back in july of last year right like even before then right we had this big run-up and everybody was like no like the market's gonna crash and it looks here like we might be in a reverse head and shoulders pattern right when you start to look at it you're like man but everything here looks bullish after we thought this right like we had this thought we crashed we bounced off 350 and we haven't looked back and that's the spy that's that's what the spy has been doing and then when you start to come here and you look at the how ethereum's been reacting well look it's doing the exact same thing right it's doing the exact same things that we we've, we've been seeing in the overall market right like although all, this was higher no matter what and it didn't really have the big pullback but as soon as the market started to pull back you had this big crash and then everybody was like oh maybe it's going to come back but now just like the markets you've had this kind of v-shaped recovery um and everything's just looking like it wants to go higher now i'm not saying it won't and i'm not trying to be like hey guys uh you're not going to make a ton of money in, in ethereum funny thing is is that i'm actually up 
more on Ethereum, way more now than I was when I made that video to get out and I was telling you guys to sell and I was saying that I was going to sell some and I did sell some, but I didn't sell a lot of my positions because I'm in these things for the long term. And the reason why I was looking to get out was to get in at cheaper prices with more money, right? So it's not like I was like, hey, let's get out of Bitcoin forever or Ethereum forever or whatever it is. I think these are long term holdings. Um, but this last week, we've had this report come out that Coinbase has been being questioned or there, there's um, investigations happening around all of these other firms, sort of like what happened back with the Sam Bankman Friedman or whatever thing where, um, you know, he was laundering money and uh, through the FTX or whatever, and that thing crashed. And then you saw Binance go under and you had all these investigations happening. And then, you know, everybody thought that Coinbase was solid until they started getting hit with these allegations and the SEC started to be um, claiming to be putting out these decisions or going after Coinbase, which all turned out to, to just be crap. It all turned out to be um, fluff or clickbait. You know what I mean? Like this was all just done for a reason that we won't know because we're sitting here on the outside like, oh, uh, they're investigating them and their share price starts to collapse. And then the next day, the, the next two days after that, when everybody's like, oh, is this real? I don't know. It, their stock price shoots up 100%, right? And it's now up 20, 30% on the year, right? And this is, and this is the thing, right? When you, when you look at these things and you say, why would they put out news like this, right? But, it, but it's, it's, it's clear to see that, and I'll probably make a video about this after. So if you want to watch that, I'll go into that a little bit more, more deep about why. But really, the reason, and this is kind of the whole thing, is that they want to trick you out of your positions. They want to scare people so that they can get in at better prices, right? So uh, when did this come out, right? So this this came out, um, do, 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 do. when did this come out? July 4th, which is today. Um, so that's not... Um, but when it actually came out, um, it was, oh, what day did that come out? Coinbase. Well, I mean, if you just look at the chart, you'll be able to see. It's not really something, you know, the five day chart. Let's look at the five day chart, right? So even, well, on the monthly chart, you'll be able to see it, but like, yeah, you don't even really see it here because it doesn't, it doesn't have that kind of thing, but I'm pretty sure it was like right around here or something. Um, I don't know. And the, these prices are not necessarily a hundred percent legit because a lot of times these are daily prices and the price will fluctuate inter daily. So on this day, I think it was this day here, um, Coinbase was at like 55 and then the news, the allegations came out that they were being investigated by the SEC or that the SEC might be going after them. And then the stock price crashed below $50. It went to like 48 or something. And then the next day, it's it opened back up at like 50, and it shot up to 55, and now it's all the way up to 80 dollars, right? From going down to almost, um, to crashing down below 50, all the way back up to over 80, right? Within a couple weeks. And and that's all because they want to trick you out of your positions, right? And this is the reason I say this is not because I'm like, hey guys. Um, you know, sell your, I'm just, I'm just trying to give you guys an idea of why you have to think a certain way and why a lot of times they do the exact opposite of what you think they're, they're going to do. And a lot of times they manipulate the news or they manipulate the situation in order to put themselves in a better spot, right? And you can see exactly here on the spy that, you know, in the past three months, it's done nothing but go up. And then when you look at the six, the six month chart, you know, or the year to date chart, you'll see that back when I made that video, which was right here, right? Like this, in this collapse where you had this, this just hard selling that came in, right? Hard selling, hard volume, right? And uh, look at this. So in that sense, you had to, Look at it from, you know, the trend is your friend and you just get out of the way. But at the same time, 
you have to anticipate that it's going to go in the other direction and you have to anticipate that there will be times when you need to anticipate in order for you to get in at a better price and that's why i was saying at the time i was like hey if you guys have a small position or something don't worry just just buy more when it gets lower but if you're sitting with a huge position and you're worried about losing thousands of dollars or something overnight that's when you want to be cutting your risk right putting yourself into a situation where you can handle that and then if it holds and breaks above certain levels then you want to be adding to that position this is just simple support and resistance and understanding trading but in the long term you have to think of it from a perspective of preserving capital as well which is why i made that video and i'm not trying to defend that really like i'm fine with me saying that and doing the complete opposite i just feel bad if if people were like actually trying to you know sell their tiny little bit and then they're mad when they lost because it's like i was selling i was telling you that you know if you only have a few hundred dollars thousand bucks or whatever and you're cool losing it or it losing a little bit of value then whatever but if you got like twenty thousand and you're like man i don't want to lose thousand dollars tonight or in the next week then you pull it out and you get it back in at, at a better price or if it holds those levels and goes higher right um but anyway so what i wanted to do here and, and look at this um we don't need the macd but i I don't mind the volume and the simple moving average. Those things are fine. Um, so, what you're gonna f what you're gonna see here though is that this everything about this chart and this is not like what is happening with these charts. I hate the way they chart, man. Like I, I just wish I should have just opened my. I just didn't want to open Quest Trade just to like deal with making a simple video. But these online charts are just so messed up like they're just they make no sense it's just like what are you doing with this with these charts right it's better when you when you get um candles and this is actually not terrible so this is a better situation going on here right so the two-year daily candle and this is good this is good i like this all right so this is gives you a big indication and this is why you know just by looking at certain chart patterns and understanding what we think is going to happen when i made those videos about it crashing it was on this candle when we had this crash down right where it opened at 405 and the close was 384 right of that weekly candle right and that's that's when you start to think about you know it crashing below this average it, it not holding right like this is this is a perfect example of understanding chart patterns and simple support and resistance and overall trends right so you have this downward trend that we have for a long time for pretty much the entire last six months of 2022 and then for a week or i should say for three weeks it breaks above it so after the year starts we had this rally in the beginning of the year right this rally put us above this moving average right and they call that the trade line it's a simple moving average and uh, I think it's the either the 20 SMA um, or the 9 EMA. Oh, it's the 50. So this is the 50 SMA. Normally, the 9 EMA is what they call the trade line. So that's where you want to look a lot of times on a longer term chart. But um, it's pretty much the same uh, as the 50. Like the 50 is, is still a good a good indicator to have on there. Anyway, I just took it off. But um, but what you want to do is you want to look at how when it came down and broke that channel, right? So we'll put the 9 EMA on there, right? Which one is that? Uh, 20. So that's the 20 EMA, but we'll put the 9 EMA on there, right? And you'll, and you'll look, you'll see that it pretty much lines up exactly with the SM, the, the, with, with the 50 SMA. right so and this is exactly why i wanted to like look at where it is at that time right so at that time right you have you have these you have all of these variables so you have the 50 sma and you have the 9 ema so the 9 ema is the trade line so the green line is the one that everybody calls the trade line and that's the one they mostly follow in terms of directional trend so if it's below the green line it is a short if it's above the green line it is a long and you can see that pretty much in the past year and a half two years it has been below the green line almost the entire time up until the last three or four months right and 
when it did this, it did it on a reversal, which came following a huge volume spike to the downside, right? But you can see that the reversal candle had more volume, and it was green volume. And that then continued and was able to push reclaim above the 90 EMA and the 50, reclaim all the moving averages, and hold above them and then push higher, right? Now, the reason why I was telling everybody to sell when this happened on this week is because when you look back here and you saw what happened when it crashed back here, look, crash comes all the way down. If you would have bought at the low of this candle, right? So you buy the um, you buy the spy at the low of this candle, which was 410. And then the next thing you know, it's back to 452, 460, and you're selling it within a week. And that's what I mean by something like Ethereum. If you're trading, you can use these to profit from that trade. But if you're if you're looking at it from a perspective of long term holding, then really, as long as you don't have a ton of capital invested, you should just be looking at it like averaging down and just buying more shares when this when it, when it gets to a much cheaper price. So that's why, like when when it crashed below that and with that amount, amount of volume, you expected downward moves in the in the coming days or at least rejections of that green line in the coming days and then lower moves right just like over here right so here when you have the rejection of the moving average you have the rejection of the 50 sma and the 9 ema what happens it collapses right it collapses and this is a month this is months of collapse following that indication comes up here it breaks above the trade line for a day and it gets huge volume to the upside to try and break but as soon as it touches the 50 sma it rejects right and then it doesn't hold the nine it rejects below the nine and then as soon as it stays below the nine for a day it crashes again so at the same time when you have recession talks when you have all these things and the market starts to rally at the beginning of the year you have this kind of santa claus rally i'll almost call it and then you have this idea that, oh, but it's, you know, there's a lot of selling volume coming in, huge selling volume. At that time, the biggest volume that you'd seen in the past six months that wasn't selling, it was all selling, you know. So no buying volume was larger than the selling volume that you had previous. And this one was a candle closing way below the 9, 9 SMA and uh, 50, sorry, the 50 SMA and the 9 EMA. And it just was an indication that you were going to have more downward moves. Now, that didn't happen. And I was wrong. No fault. No, no excuses, right? But what I'm trying to tell you now is that this is a learning situation. This is where you look at it and you say, hey, what did I learn from this? How did I, why was I wrong? Why was I, you know, anticipating this to happen and what caused it to not happen and like i said i explained it all to you here and you can look it up yourself and, and kind of do your own research to understand exactly why this happened but going back to what i was saying about coinbase this is why i think that you have these situations of the market does exactly what you think it shouldn't right it wants to trick you they do this on purpose and i'm not saying it's like one or two people that are just sitting there like clicking a button haha -ha, but there are algorithms in place that make it hard for people to pick one direction or to see a trend and follow the trend or to fully be able to profit because they don't want people to be able to just immediately you know make money easily out of the market they want to they want it to be hard for people that don't have millions of dollars that can make money off of two three cent fluctuations in price when you need you know bigger movements they want you to you know they want to force you to try and use more capital or they want to or they want to make you kind of um hold trades longer uh, going with options different kinds of plays in order for you to benefit and not uh you know get screwed over by just not being able to make enough money out of a out of these small swings or place fluctuations when it trades in a channel or when you don't get the kind of uh, movements that you think or you should get right so that's 
that's just simply why I wanted to go over that real quick and just give you guys an update uh, on the way I think you know what's gonna happen um, not just with with ethereum and you know because lately you know you had this panic with the with the whole thing with um, you know the selling and the the coinbase getting um, investigated and that's when you had this crash right here you know it, it, it dropped all the way down to 2200 and now it's right back to 26 um, and so the idea there like I said they were trying to trick you out maybe they were loading up on ETFs right they were buying the the ethereum ETFs and they wanted to get them at lower prices so they put out this news these 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 uh, shock uh, shock and awe news articles in order to get everybody to sell sell so that they can buy um, at lower prices and that's just what they do but uh what I think is gonna happen is you know is simple it's it's not it's not complicated it's really just an understanding of what could happen and what I think will happen if certain factors come true so the number one thing is if all of this talk of, of them getting investigated never really comes up again and it's just kind of water under the bridge and Coinbase keeps going higher. If Coinbase breaks 100, I think Ethereum goes to 3,000 easy. The issue here is that the markets need to follow. So the markets need to stay green and they need to stay above these moving averages, particularly the green 9 EMA, right? The 50 SMA is a bit more tricky and it, it is a bigger level of support and resistance. But at the same time, the directional trends to the downside typically come a lot more violent and a lot quicker than movements to the upside. As you can see, like the past like six or seven months, or whatever, we would tick, 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 tick up. Like it just slow little ticks up and fight back and forth. And then we tick up, tick up, tick up on smaller volume. But like there's no huge white candles, right? And when you see these downward candles, you see them, they're big, right? They're really big and you get these huge flushes down, right? And so that's what can happen with selling. Selling pressure can take you down 20 or 30 points within a couple days. Whereas buying pressure typically, you know, it takes a little bit more to go up. It goes up slower, but steadier. And that's why um, once it starts to, re to respect and hold these averages as support. So once it held the, the 9 EMA as support, you could look to go long and hold that um, for a long trade, right? So now, as long as the 9 EMA, which currently sits at 420.53, which obviously we're way above that right now on the SPY, um, but if the SPY opens up at 4, 4.30, you know, or 4.35 to, on, on uh, Wednesday and uh, drops down to 4.28, and the next thing you know, we're in the 420s, we're, we're testing 4.20, and we break it very quickly, and next thing you know, the market starts to reverse and that that whole idea of recession starts to come back in play because right now there's nothing really that can bring it down everything has been positive all the like well I, not necessarily positive but all of the big uh, fomc meetings all of the big fed announcements and uh a lot of the numbers have come out um cpi data and all of these things have come out and really the jobs numbers are good um, obviously there are still we still have a lot of inflation and we're still doing pretty bad in terms of uh, economic growth for the last few years but when you look at the overall jobs and you know we're actually growing in terms of the economy but it's it's slow and that's why I don't expect a huge breakout but as I say that you don't know right you just don't know because one of the big things you'll that you got to notice here is that this level that held as resistance previously back last year in uh, August or September um, it's broken and now we're above that right now we're pushing higher with volume with decent volume right we've been pushing higher so the question now becomes is this next level here right which is 450 right um, can we break 450 now 450 is gonna be huge you can see back here there was a ton of tries and every time it got rejected finally it tried and then you know and this is this is the trick candle right well, I shouldn't say the trick candle but it's the candle where they make you believe for a day that it's gonna break out and then they flush it back down right so anybody that goes long here hoping for you know to hold some puts for or, or some calls for like a couple weeks make some good money it crashes down next thing you know they're, they're taking a loss because you know um, because the trends didn't hold because when it looked like it was holding and reversing it didn't it just rejected and came back down and did it very quickly 
And that's why I say that, like, right now, we're kind of in this situation where we're at the highs. If we push any higher, we're going to be testing the all-time highs, and then we're going to be looking at a breakout to all-time highs at a time when nothing is really there to bring it back down. So, really, I'm not, and this is where it's like I'm going to say it sound like I'm saying, like, everything's going to be green and you should look to go long, because I don't think that at all. I actually think right now is probably the one of the hardest times to trade the market and to look at something like Ethereum or the overall um, markets and to pick a direction. It's very hard. And the main reason is because you're coming back up to these same levels that it's got rejected at for the last year. And you can't think about them as being just, you know, easy levels to get through. It's going to have, it's probably going to take a couple weeks, but it'll probably reject at some point. And my, like I said, as long as it can hold the 9 EMA, then you're good. Then just keep going long and, and, and buying and holding, right? And don't take profits in, unless you see it break those lines. Because, you know, you're, you're only going to see upside from here in both Ethereum and the SPY as long as it can hold these levels. Because Ethereum basically trades with the SPY. Unless you get some huge announcement like the SEC or whatever. Even that didn't really, like, yeah, it sent it down like 10%. But it didn't really destroy ethereum in any way because ethereum is not connected or attached to one um platform right or one exchange it is a multi-layered system and platform that is its own ecosystem and you don't really have to look at it as being reliant on coinbase or binance or um you know whatever uh trading firm is out there that you use to conduct um bitcoin or ethereum purchases and i use bitbuy in canada or newton and uh these are ones that really uh, you don't have to worry about Ethereum, you know, dying because Coinbase is getting investigated and, you know, like whatever. It's not going to hurt um, Ethereum at all because it has nothing to do with their technology, their applications and what they're going to do in the future. And there's a lot of people that say like, oh, Ethereum's a, it's a scam. It's all a scam. Guys, get out. You know, like they're just pumping and, and there's no real value to this. And there's some really big investors that say that too. But what I say to them and, and what they will even admit to you, a lot of these people, is there's no v value in it for the next 10 years. So what they're saying is that if you can hold for the next 10 years and yeah, you might go down and might go up, but if you can hold and build yourself a decent position, then in the next 10 years, this is going to 10x because the value will show itself at that time when people start to understand the versatility, the applications that come from Ethereum, how you can build entire um, you know, networks and, and internet uh, blockchains through this technology. You can use it to centralize your data, use it to have uh, versatile virtual applications and decentralized finances. All these things happen through Ethereum and they make it possible for these people to use it, which is why I get when people say Bitcoin has no value. I understand that. It's like digital gold and that's cool and all, except for gold has value. Gold has actual value because it can be used for things. B gold is a great conductor of electricity. It can be built into things. Many of the things that um, protect or, or use have gold coating in them. They use gold to con for uh, surgeries and things like that, gold plating for teeth. All of these things, gold is a very valuable thing because it's not just a store of value. It also has versatility. It can be used for things. It is a great pr uh, defensive uh, metal. It's also a great conductive metal. So these are reasons why gold is a better asset than something like Bitcoin, which really is only a store of value. That's all it has for it. And it's not, it's a store of value that's protected. Um, you know, it's not centralized in some government or, or controlled by them. But like you, what you saw with the SEC, it can be influenced by government decisions or by um, uh, investigations or some sort of uh, litigation, right? So that's, that's why you need to understand these things, but also don't fear them. Use them as opportunities to buy. This is when you profit is when you see that. You profit from it, right? Instead of letting yourself lose money or sell every time it dips and then buy it back when it's at the top and then keep you know getting yourself in this situation where you're losing money even though it's been going up all year basically right and that's where you got to understand that it, say you will have a thousand dollars to invest you don't want to put it all in today especially if it's at the top you want to put maybe 300 in today that way if it goes higher you're still in it and if it drops down to 240 224 you put the another 200 in drops down to 2200 then you put the other the rest in and you you hope it holds that level right 
And if it can hold the 2150, this level here where it found resistance before it shot up, then you look to go long again and hopefully hold it up, right? And you take profits when you're in the green, not when you're down. You know what I mean? Um, so that's all I wanted to say in this video. Uh, sorry if it was a little long, guys. Thanks for paying attention and staying with me through it. I apologize for making it way too long. But uh, anyway, hopefully you guys got some good information from it. I mean, really, like I said, it's really understanding chart patterns. It's understanding the way the markets are going to go. And like I said, right now is one of the hardest times to look at the market. So if you are kind of sitting on the sidelines, I would err with caution, but also don't fear that, you know, oh, I'm going to lose in the next two years getting in now because you're going to make money in the next two years with Ethereum regardless. It's just a matter of whether the market is going to crash and collapse rather than just keep rallying like we've seen for the last three or four months. Um, and like I said, I'm not sure. I'm just giving you guys a perspective of where so many traders are looking and why they're looking at chart patterns in certain ways to either profit from this move or to save themselves and de-risk themselves because of the current situation we're in, right? Anyway, thanks guys. Have a great day.